Bethany Inn, number five, high on the mountaintop. And after that, we have another recently returned miss missionary, Sister Zanetti Iyongi, who was from Nashville, uh, not from, but she served in Nashville, Tennessee, who, if you remember our uh, the speakers two weeks ago, the family was also served there. Uh, we are looking forward to hearing from them. We'll go to that point in the meeting. All right, cool. Um, good morning, or afternoon, brothers and sisters. Um, like you just said, I returned back from the Missouri St. Louis mission around like July, um, mid-July. And so that was a very good experience that I was able to have over there serving two years. Um, the ground there, we covered like a pretty big ground uh, missionary. So we went from St. Louis, kind of like the middle part of it, and went up to like Champaign, Illinois, towards Chicago, then up to Columbia, um, Missouri, which is like kind of where the University of Missouri is and then down towards like the south, so kind of close to Kentucky area. So it's a pretty big ground that we covered over there, but um, I really enjoyed my time as a missionary. And it was an experience that I'll never forget, that's for sure. Um, one thing about being a missionary is just when we, when we go out, we just share the message of the restoration. That's our unique message to the world. And I loved um, sharing that with people. One of my favorite things to do um, I would always say, let's get in the home and set the tone. So every time we went knocking doors, we'd be like, all right, let's get in the home, set the tone so we could share the message of the restoration. And so that was one of my favorite things to do. And I'm just gonna go over the message of the restoration with you guys today and um, just share a couple of experiences that I had with my mission. Um, the first one is God is our loving Heavenly Father. Um, I've definitely experienced that God loves all his children everywhere. And that's a very unique truth that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has. I'm very grateful to know that my Heavenly Father loves me and loves all of His children. Um, another thing that He does because He loves us is He blesses us as individuals and as families as well. Um, on my mission, we were in a place called Lake St. Louis. And me and my two companions were struggling at the time to find some people to teach because it's a very nice area. Lake St. Louis has some massive houses. Some houses that, oh my gosh, it was crazy. But we were struggling to find people to teach, but one day, it was cold winter, we knocked on someone's door, her name was Samantha, and she's watching home alone, so we kind of like teach her right then and there. Um, that's a big priority for her and her children to watch that movie. And so we just decided to come back another time, and we taught her, and. Um, she never ended up being baptized, but she came to church and things like that. And one time after she came to church, she said um, that her child said, um, this is just a feeling that I, like, I'm just happy right now. I have a feeling of happiness and peace. And that's something that I always get at church as well. After I come to church, I feel peace and I feel happy. And so I was grateful for Samantha and her being able to experience happiness and peace and coming to church. And so after God blesses us as families and individuals, He also gives us prophets to lead and guide us. And we see many different prophets throughout the Bible. We see them lead and guide the church. We see Moses, for example, leading and guiding us. But we go through a period of great apostasy where people will start to fall away and not follow the prophet for a time. And then whenever the time is right, God will call another prophet once again. And so this happens until Jesus Christ comes to the earth. Jesus Christ comes to the earth and he establishes his church while he's here. Um, he gives his authority to his apostles. And one follower of Jesus Christ that I've seen on my mission, what's her name was um, Darlene. Darlene and Mike. And Mike used to be a member but got excommunicated for some reasons. Um, we found, well Darlene kind of found out, she showed up at church one Sunday and said she wanted to start meeting with us. And so Darlene was very hard to teach because she had all these questions all the time. It was very, very hard to teach her. So we, me and my companions, one day we were like, we don't have anything to teach her. She has all these questions again. We're gonna have to like not teach her anymore. We gotta go find someone that's ready to be taught. And so um, she said she was reading in the Bible and we told her to read the Book of Mormon, but she didn't do that. But, um, she was reading the Bible and she's like, I realized that I need to be baptized and follow Jesus Christ. Um, and so I was like, okay, let's do this then. We're, we're ready to take the step forward and help you and Mike be rebaptized. So that was a very 
special experience that I was able to have. Um, just them following Jesus Christ, um, recognizing that, and stepping into the waters of baptism. And so after Jesus Christ comes to the earth, we have um, something called the Great Apostasy, where for a period of time here, a long period of time, we don't have someone with the authority to baptize or to lead a guide in the church. We don't have a prophet, essentially. And so, um, one day there's a boy named Joseph Smith who had these questions of why are there so many different churches? Which one has the right authority from God? And so he was asking all these churches, where should he go? Which one's the right one? And they always point him to the Bible. And so he went to the Bible one day and he read James chapter 1, verse 5. And that says, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. So he took the scripture to heart and went to grow in trees and asked God in prayer to know which church is true, to know which way he should go in life. And so when he went to that grove of trees, he said, I saw a pillar of light exactly over my head, above the brightness of the sun, which descended gradually until it fell upon me. When the light rested upon me, I saw two personages, whose brightness and glory defy all description standing above me in the air. One of them spake unto me, calling me by name, and said, pointing to the other, This is my beloved son, hear him. And so this is very powerful. I love, I love sharing this as a missionary. Um, the spirit always fills the room. And we would say that. Um, and I definitely know it's true. I know Joseph Smith saw God the Father of Jesus Christ. Um, and so because of this, how do we know that Joseph Smith saw God the Father of Jesus Christ? How, we, how do we know that the authority is back to the earth through the prophet Joseph Smith? And that is the Book of Mormon, another testament of Jesus Christ. And I definitely found a testimony of the Book of Mormon on my mission. It's my favorite book of all time. Um, one experience I had, I was able to serve in, um, on the campus of the University of Illinois, which is like one of the best experiences I've had ever. It was so cool. And so on one day, it was spring break. But over there in Illinois, it's like freezing during spring break. So it was snowing and like it wasn't very fun. There wasn't many students to talk to. So one day we were, uh, I was with a companion that I didn't really, like me and him didn't really get along, but whatever. And we were knocking some doors, trying to find some students. And we run into this girl named Kenya. She is so cool. Um, we used to call her Kenya in the crib, which was like really cool. Um, but um, she let us right in and it's snowing and it's freezing cold. She's like, yeah, I'll figure you guys out. She heard us out. And later on, she was baptized in like four or five weeks. Just a miracle that we were able to experience. And after she was baptized, we are like, how come, like, what, what, like, what sparked? Like, what kind of happened for you? Like, yeah, I want to be baptized. And she said one day, she's like, I was doing what you guys were telling me, praying in church reading and I wasn't really getting anything. And she said she read one morning, she'd read and she woke up. She read one morning, she said, okay, cool. Put the book down and then all of a sudden she heard the voice. It's true. She's like, what? what's true? And she like looked around and she turned around and she saw the Book of Mormon and she heard the voice again, it's true. And that's a great experience to um, definitely hear her say that. It is true, and I definitely know the Holy Ghost works like that as well. So that was really, really cool. I definitely really love Ken Nash. She was one of my favorite people to teach. Um, I definitely know prayer is a big part of this. After um, we do all these things, we come to church, we pray, we read the Book of Mormon. How do we know all that's true as well? We, we pray about it. We pray about the Book of Mormon. And so I've seen prayer help me accomplish goals on my mission and goals in real life. I, I could just never foresee myself doing. Um, there's this one goal that I set. Um, there's time, I was like about 18 months in my mission, I didn't feel like I was really doing anything to bring people into the fold of God. I was kind of struggling at this point. And so I had a conversation with God through prayer, and I was like, okay, let me bring a family of five to the covenant path. Like, help me find this family of five. And so I got sent to a YSA, and I'm like, okay, this goal is going to be tough to get. But one day we were walking around the campus, and we find this Uber driver, and we talked to him real quick. He's like, yeah, sure, I'll hear you guys out. His name was Kevin. And so we taught Kevin for like two lessons, and then we passed him off. 
not knowing what was going to happen, but he kept his commitments very well, and he had a family of five. And sooner or later, he just got baptized, like so, like this last month. And so I know, Heavenly Father will help you accomplish your goals through prayer. I've definitely experienced that at home. Um, but that is the message of the restoration, and um, one thing I had on my mission, I had two mission presidents, and so at the year mark of my mission, my mission president just like, all right, I'm going to do this rapid fire of things that I've kind of learned, and so I'm going to do that today as well. Things that I've kind of learned on my mission, just a rapid fire um, of things that I've learned for the past two years, and so I'm just going to go off right here, but it says, if it's important to you, it's important to God. Lukewarm commitment, mediocre obedience, weakens faith. Slim to none, I was always told to bet on slim. Work like everything is on us, pray like everything is on him. You can never be burnt out if you focus on people. Keep your eyes upon the living prophet. The power within you is greater than the obstacle in front of you. You're never released from the, from the family. Be 100% responsible. Problem well known is a problem half halfway solved. So I love my mission. I love Jesus Christ. I'm grateful for um, the experiences that I had, of course. Um, I know the Book of Mormon is true. I know that we do have a prophet here on earth, and I know that this is um, the true church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. amen.
Um, I'm so grateful that I have this time to be here before you all and share my testimony with you. Um, lately, with life being so busy for me, I've been praying for more opportunities to bless others with my testimony. And then just last week, I got a text from lovely Brother Wood, and he asked me to speak in church today. And I couldn't help but laugh, but also be filled with gratitude in knowing that Heavenly Father is so aware of me, and he truly answers all of our prayers. And in all honesty, I needed this. And I'm so excited to stand before you all and let you into my life and tell you about how this gospel continues to amaze me with its miracles of every kind and how that helps me to know each and every day in my heart that this gospel is true. Um, I've been asked to speak on my mission experience and I pray that as I do so, um, that as you all listen to my talk, I hope that if there is one thing that I would like for you to take from my testimony is to always remember that you are all sons and daughters of a loving Heavenly Father. And that you are never too far away from Him to reach you. And you are never unworthy for His love. And throughout my own life, I often forgot these simple truths. Um, before making the decision to serve the Lord, I was not fully invested in this gospel. Um, I found myself becoming more like the world each and every day as I rebelled against the light and the truth of what I knew this gospel could provide for me in this life. And in those moments of rebelling against the Savior and Falling into temptation time and time again, it became a repetitive cycle in my life, and as you expect, it left me feeling hopeless. It left me feeling sad and sometimes angry with my Heavenly Father and very doubtful about this gospel. And in those moments, it helped me realize that that is exactly how Satan would want us to feel. We all know that. No matter how young or how old we are, at any given moment that Satan sees us makes that Satan sees us make a mistake, he will try to convince us that Heavenly Father's character isn't loving and isn't forgiving. He will try to confuse us so that we forget our true divine identity, and that's being sons and daughters of a loving Heavenly Father. Um, coming from the family that I have, I come from a big blended family where the gospel is the center of everything that we do. And the lifestyle that I used to live, it was hard for me to align that with what I grew up with. Um, but I'm so grateful for the family members that I have that are such an example to me because every single day I was reminded that I was tired of letting the adversary control me. I was tired of letting Satan win every single day. You know, I wanted happiness. The, the kind of happiness that I knew I could take with me after this life. And luckily for me, I found that within the gospel. And I know we all can find that within the atonement of Jesus Christ. I simply found that in repentance. I had to shift my perspective from viewing repentance as a punishment to Heavenly Father simply asking me to change, simply asking me to become more like Him. And no matter how many times I fail, there is a way for me to get back up and do what's right. And I will tell you all now that I have a strong testimony of repentance. The gift of repentance is one of the main reasons why I chose to serve a mission. And the same reason why I choose to stay a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And it is because I've experienced firsthand the healing power that comes from the atonement of Jesus Christ. 
And I want nothing more than to share that with others who are looking for the way and the truth and the light. Serving in the Tennessee National Mission has, has been such a divine experience for me, and I wouldn't treat it for anything in the world. And if I could use one word to describe those 18 months of my life, I would use the word divine. And I say that because with every Book of Mormon that I've given out, every lesson that my companions and I taught, every person that we help make and keep covenants, It was overall life changing for me. The spirit was always present and I couldn't deny that this gospel was true. Being a missionary for Jesus Christ was or is such a privilege because I got to witness firsthand people change their own lives by listening to the spirit. I saw people sacrifice family relationships because the Spirit had shown unto them that the doctrine of Christ is essential for eternal life. And that's why my mission experience is so divine to me because I know without a doubt in my mind that there is nothing else in this world that can truly save a person's life except for this gospel. And I learned all of this in the Book of Mormon. Um, as I was preparing to serve a mission, I never once picked up the Book of Mormon. I always told myself that I read the Book of Mormon on my mission. And when I got on my mission, I felt so unprepared. And I kind of regretted the time that I wasted. Um, but as we all know, Heavenly Father is with us every step of the way. So as I was teaching these lessons to these wonderful people that I look at as family now, um, I saw it as me learning with them, learning the gospel with them. And as I was doing that, I was falling in love with the Book of Mormon. And I get emotional talking about the Book of Mormon because I really never thought that this book could change my life. I never thought that these stories could relate to me as a young 21-year-old young adult. But there's been times on my mission where it was always so hard. And the Book of Mormon was always there to give me comfort. And I felt it in my life as a missionary. I felt um, the healing that I received, the, the enlightenment that I received in my heart to be able to pick myself up and share that same feeling with others. Because yes, it's that important. There's a lot of sacrifices that we make as missionaries. And even as members too, to help ourselves get to where we want to be. And where we want to be is in the celestial kingdom, with our families and with our Heavenly Father again. But to be able to do that, we must make sacrifices. And that's what I learned on my mission, is that a religion that doesn't require sacrifice will not bring salvation. And I'm so grateful for the standards and the gospel and the things that we are taught at the age of eight from keeping the word of wisdom, and keeping the law of chastity, and coming to church and keeping all of these commandments, it helps us to sacrifice our needs and our wants for what is a greater, for a more meaningful life. And growing up, this was something that my, my family, my parents, they always taught me, but I never really understood until I had to go and find and look for myself. When I made the decision to serve a mission, I kind of just did it out of the blue. And I didn't expect it to change me the way that it did. Throughout my mission, there was a conference talk by President Nelson that was a theme for 
my entire 18 months, and it was um, the talk, The Power of Spiritual Momentum. I love the five ways that he gives us to stay on the covenant path and to keep going. And I'd like to encourage you all to take a look at that conference talk because for me, it has really helped me to know that everything that's ahead of us, everything that we can look forward to is where Heavenly Father is. There's no need to look back. There's no need to hold on to the past because Heavenly Father wants us to pick ourselves up and to look forward and to walk towards Him. And testifying this to the people in Tennessee and Illinois and Kentucky, those are three different states that I served in, um, like I said, it's life changing for me. It allowed me to really put myself in these people's shoes and really ask myself, when I'm asking this person to join the church, I'm simply, well, it's not very sim simple, but I'm asking them to change their entire life. I'm asking them to get uncomfortable and do something that they wouldn't usually do. And my mission president would always tell us, and that's okay. Because Heavenly Father is more interested in our growth than our comfort. And so we have to put ourselves in situations where we can grow, where we can get uncomfortable and learn. And that is one of the biggest life lessons that I've learned on my mission, is to get uncomfortable no matter what, to step outside the box so that we can learn why we are here and what our purpose is. Um, a person that is an example of this to me is one of my good friends. His name is Anvesh Kumar, and he is someone that me and my companion had taught in my last area before I came home. Um, I was serving in Murray, Kentucky, and I was covering the family in the YSA ward. And there was one week where me and my companion was having another rough day. <laughs> um, in our cult culture and our mission, my mission president always told us to never come to church without friends. And so that was our goal for, for the month. We always wanted to make sure that we had at least someone at church with us. Because partaking the sacrament is just as important as it is for us and for one another. That experience is so spiritual and it's worth it to invite someone to join us that hasn't experienced anything like this before. And this one week, it was just super hard for me and my companion. Um, everyone that we were teaching, we had committed to church throughout the week. But when it came to Sunday and we would knock on their door, nobody would answer. Or they would tell us next week. And we were really pushing for having at least one of our friends you know, we went to two wards, and so we tried our hardest. And what we would do um, for YSA, our YSA was the last ward that we attended to. We would go with the branch president's wife, and she would take us in her car, and she would drive us anywhere, whether it be a park or on the corner of the street. And me and my companion would hop out, and we'd walk around, and we'd just talk to everyone and anyone that we saw and help them come to church with us. And no one said yes. And so we, it was about that time where sacrament was going to start. Me and my companion kind of just accepted that no one was coming to church with us. And so we get in our car, we see this group of college um, kids walking towards our church building. There were a couple of miles back though. And me and my companion looked at each other and kind of was just like, wow, it would be nice if these four kids would come to church with us. And so we went to church with the sacrament, and we went to the society, 
and kind of just going off, going about our, our Sunday. Um, and we're having our meeting in um, our branch president's office because our YC was smaller than this. And so there wasn't a lot of sisters. And so we had the door closed and then we hear a knock on the door. And the door opens and it's the clerk. And the clerk goes, um, Sister missionaries, there's four friends that just walked in that want to learn more about the church. And we looked at each other and we quickly ran up to the door because when any, any missionary hears that, they're running to the door waiting to share the message with them. And so we ran to the door and it was our friend Andish. Andish had just moved here, moved to Kentucky from India along with his three other friends. And they had walked about 10 miles from their apartment to the church building. And we sat there and we were talking to them how they found our church building. And they said that they put into the GPS Church of Christ. And the first church that popped up on the GPS was the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And when I heard that, I instantly knew that that was a miracle because that usually does not happen when you type in Church of Christ in the GPS. And so they followed the Google Maps and it led them to our church building. And for them to walk 10 miles to us, show dedication, show that the Lord was so aware of me and my companions. And so, although they only made it to the second hour, it was still such a blessing to see that there are miracles everywhere and that Heavenly Father is in the details of everything in our lives. And so, throughout that month, we were teaching Anvish and his friends a lot. And Anvish is the most prepared person that I've ever met on my mission. Everything that we taught from the priesthood authority to keeping the word of wisdom, he understood everything. And he accepted everything. As we invited him to be baptized, um, only Anvish was so firm in the things that we taught him, he was willing to take that next step to enter into a covenant with our Heavenly Father. But his other three friends were very supportive of it. They were Hindu, and so they were really loyal to their religion. And when they had saw that Anvish was kind of stepping out of his comfort zone and doing something new, Anvish lost all three of his friends that he came here with to India. To me, that, that shows a lot of courage. He told us that ever since he started coming to our church, he felt like this has been his family all along, and that he was looking for his family away from home. And every time we had a lesson with him, he would um, FaceTime his family back in India and have them sit there as we read the Book of Mormon. And what touched my heart was that he was willing to do so. We didn't have to sit there and force him. He was willing to do so because the Spirit, that's how strong the Spirit can be in our lives if we just listen. And Amish inspired me so much because even though he lost his friends, he almost lost the place that he lived, that he was living in because he was rooming with them, he did everything that he could to get to church every Sunday. And he was there every Sunday after the first Sunday that they came. And being able to watch his growth has been life-changing for me. Every person that I've met on my mission, from non-members to random people on the street to members, I love each and every one of them. I look at them as my family. Anvish looked at us the same way. 
And so Andish was baptized, and we were also able to go to the temple with him to do um, baptism for the dead, for his family. Which was such a miracle because as we were teaching him, I remember the day that we invited him to be baptized, and me and my companion were very nervous because asking a person to be baptized isn't um, something casual, it's something that's something that must be intentional. And so we wanted to set the tone, as Seth was saying, we wanted to set the tone and, and really make sure that the Spirit was present. And I remember there was one Sunday, Anush came with some really bad news. And he came and he told us that three of his family members had gotten a car accident and passed away back in India. And this was right after sacrament. And he called me and my companion and my branch president outside and he was like, I need to pray right now. After we said a prayer, me and my companion looked at each other and we instantly knew that we needed to teach him the plan of salvation because that was something that we hadn't taught him before. And so we left second hour and we went into a room on our own and we sat there and taught him the plan of salvation. <coughs> And he loved when we explained to him about the spirit world. And it didn't even take us long enough for him to invite him, himself to join the church and to make this covenant with our Heavenly Father. And hearing him ask us if he could be baptized was, again, life-changing for me. That was the first on my mission, and that was the last person I taught before I came home. Anders has changed my life forever. There's many people on my mission that I've met who are like him, and who are out there here, too, in Victorville, maybe outside, at the stores or wherever. There are prepared people all around us. But for us to recognize them, we must step out of our comfort zone and share the blessings that we have from this gospel. I'm so grateful for my mission experience. I'm grateful for President Nelson and his push for everyone and anyone to serve the mission. Before I came home, my last conference with my mission president, we had an Area 70 come and his name was Elder Morrison. And he was talking to us, um, missionaries who were about to return home, and giving us advice to tell our younger siblings about serving a mission. And this is something that I would love to share for any of you that might think about serving a mission. Elder Morrison told us, if you have a friend or a family member who wants to serve the mission, tell them not to pray about it. Tell them to just go and do it. If we truly love and say that we follow our prophet, we would follow him when he says to serve a mission. So don't pray about it, because we already know how great of a blessing it can be in our lives. And when I heard Elder Morrison said that, it touched my heart so much to understand that anything that our prophet stands for, we should follow him with no hesitation. And don't get me wrong, it took me a long time to really understand that, but I know without a shadow of a doubt in my mind that I know President Nelson is called of God to lead our church in these last days. Brothers and sisters, I'm so grateful that I was able to stand here and share my testimony with you all. I'm so grateful for the opportunity that I had to share my testimony because I haven't been able to share it enough since I've been home. And I really hope that you all remember that you are so loved by our Heavenly Father. So loved enough that He wants you to go show others that who may forget their divine identity. And I hope you all know that 
This gospel is meant to be shared. It's not meant to be kept in our hearts or our own selves to have. It's meant to be shared and to bring others closer to it. And so I hope you all can step out of your comfort zone this week and share your simple testimony with people. I know that there's so many blessings that can come from doing that. Um, I love you all and I'm so grateful to be in this board and I'm excited for the things that I've learned from all of you. And I hope you all can feel my love for my testimony today. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Seth and That was amazing. Um, we also want to thank our organist, Zach Woodruff, and our courser, Daniel Antone, for their efforts in always striving to uplift us with the music. And uh, we will now close with our closing hymn, Joseph Smith's First Prayer, on, number, on page 26, and our benediction will be given by Elder from the
trucks that were good for this. All the many buses that house was so fun. I was so grateful that we could gather together to praise and worship the name of the Son. Father, we're grateful for the spirit that has been felt that has filled this room. And we ask that we linger in our hearts the rest of this day, that we continue to guide us and that we may feel the love that thou hast for us. And we ask thee for opportunities to share our testimonies that we know that thou lives and that thy son be atoned for us and that this restored gospel is on the earth today. We love thee and we're grateful for thee. We humbly ask of and say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.